Let me take you back to summer today. It was an ancient civilization found in the region of Mesopotamia about 3100 BC. And it dominated Mesopotamia for the next thousand years. In the Sumerian creation myth, the debate between sheep and grain, it opens with a location called the Hill of Heaven and Earth. It describes various agricultural developments. It's a dwelling place of the gods, situated at the point where the heavens rest on the earth. It is there that mankind had their first habitat, and there the Babylonians' version of the Garden Eden should be placed. From about 2600 B.C., in the Kesh Temple Hymn, the first recorded description of a domain of the gods is described as being the color of a garden. The four corners of heaven became green for Enlil, like a garden. In the Epic of Gilgamesh, it describes Gilgamesh traveling to a wondrous garden of the gods that is the source of a river next to a mountain covered in cedars. It also references a plant of life. The myth of Enki and then Herzog also describes the Sumerian paradise as a garden, where Enki obtained water from Urtu to irrigate. The Song of the Ho features Enlil creating mankind with a hoe and the Anunnaki spreading outward from the original garden of the gods. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I came out of Sunday school as a kid thinking the Bible said God made a garden for Adam and Eve. I was told it was a paradise on earth for his children. And we children screwed it up by obeying the devil. But as it turns out, the Bible doesn't actually say all of that. What it says is God plants the garden in the second chapter of Genesis. He forms man from the dust of the ground and breathes into his nostrils the breath of life. Then Yahweh God takes the man and puts him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. Well, that's right. Adam was intended to be a laborer. The garden wasn't made for people. It was for the gods. And as a rule, this is how ancient Near Eastern gods did things. The Sumerian god Enki created humans to carry baskets of clay in the canal building project so the gods could stop working. The Babylonian god Marduk set these gods free by having humans created who he then imposed into service. Then the Mesopotamian god Enlil commands humanity to take in their hands, hoes and baskets to benefit the house of the great gods. But the new hell proved bothersome. Enlil said they're lazy, they steal, they stay up all night making noise. In short, what he's saying is they're willful creatures. They have received free will. From the Bible, the first thing Yahweh did when he put Adam in the garden was to command him, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Then he thinks it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as a partner. So after Yahweh creates all the animals and Adam names them, he then causes Adam to go into a deep sleep. Then he took one of his ribs and he closes its place with flesh. And the rib that Yahweh God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. But it's all downhill from here. Because a wise serpent tells Eve that Yahweh is lying about the tree in the middle of the garden. So she eats the fruit. She gives it to Adam and he eats it and they realize they're naked. Then they heard Yahweh God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yahweh God among the trees of the garden. But Yahweh God called to the man and said, Where are you? Adam said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. So <laughs> Yahweh says, Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave me, gave it to me. 
she gave me fruit from the tree and I ate. Yeah, we always blame the women, don't we? Now, there's an age-old question about this passage. Why did God put the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the middle of the garden in the first place? That is, if he didn't want Adam and Eve to eat the fruit. Simple, because this is not their garden. It's not some paradise designed for humans. It's a place where divine beings saunter around enjoying the fresh air and the breathtaking views and the fruit of the sacred trees which mere mortal gardeners need to keep their grubby little hands off of. And these are the gods of old. They were powerful, but they're not omnipotent or omniscient. Yahweh doesn't know where the humans are when he can't see them. And he didn't know in advance that they would disobey him. But back in the day, the Hebrews, like all ancient Near Eastern people, believed in many gods. These gods had families and waged wars and played pranks and got drunk and had jobs and formed governments. We still see bits and pieces of the old theology in the earliest writings compiled in the Hebrew Bible. This includes Yahweh's explanation to the divine council of why he's decided the humans that he brought to Eden had to be kicked out. He says, see, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil, and now he might reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So Yahweh sends the two humans out the east gate of the garden and sets cherub and flaming swords there as guards against their return. So the gods, for their part, stayed put in their garden. Now, the concept of the garden of the gods or a divine paradise may have originated in Sumer. The concept of this home of the immortals was later handed down to the Babylonians who conquered Sumer. Then the Babylonians conquered Judah and brought the elite to Babylon. And according to the book of Ezra, the Persian Cyrus the Great ended the exile in 538 BCE, the year after he captured Babylon, and let them return home. And this is when they adopted the story of the Garden of Gods and put it into their foundational myth for Judaism.